Hello everyone. Uh, so today we are going to learn about the topic perception. So let's start uh, with our topic and let's understand the meaning of perception with a simple quotation into the next slide. So here it says that you see person and things not as they are, but as you are. That simply means we perceive the stimuli in accordance to us. That means individual differences and individual factors affect our perception. Uh, let us take an example over here. Uh, suppose you're sitting in a room and suddenly a dog appears. So some people may be having a bad experience with a dog. So they will start running uh, away from the dog and will start shouting. Whereas some people will love the dog and will pet the dog. So that means the dog is a stimulus over there. But how the individual is perceiving that stimulus, that dog is different for every individual. Like someone is petting him and someone is running away from him. So that, that simply means that we perceive the things in accordance to us, not as they appear to us. So let's start with uh, our presentation and let's see what all things we are going to cover into this presentation. So today we are going to uh, learn about the introduction uh, to perception as well as meaning of perception. Along with that, we are going to learn about the definition and principles of per perception and the process of perception. And lastly, we are going to focus on to the factor affecting perception and errors in perception. So let's start with the introduction to perception. In the introduction, it says that the word perception is taken from the Latin word percipio, which means receiving or collecting. Every day, different stimuli around us will be stimulating our sense organs. In turn, the brain will interpret this sensation. It's only after such interpretation we understand what the stimulus actually is. So this process of interpretation of stimulus is known as perception. So perception includes two processes. One is a sensation and next is the interpretation. Into the sensation process, our sensory organs like our eyes, our nose, our tongue or ear, they will collect the data from the surrounding or from the environment. And they will send all those information to the brain where the process of interpretation will occur. So after interpretation and finding out the outcome, our, our brain will perceive the things and we try to match the information that is existing already into our brain. So in that way, we perceive the things. So this is about the introduction to perception. So as we studied, the perception is the same simple meaning of perception is to receive or to collect stimulus or collect things. Next is the meaning of perception. So meaning of perception can be easily be understood by this, part this particular picture given over here into the slide. So we studied that perception includes two processes. One is a sensation and one next is a interpretation. So into the sensation process, our auditory, our, uh, we can say visual sensation, our olfactory sensation, our gustatory uh, sensation or tactile sen sensation. All these sense organs will collect the data from the environment or will collect the stimuli from the environment and then they will filter out the particular stimulus onto which we are going to focus so all those uh, stimulus on which we are going to focus are going to be sent to our brain the brain now will act on to those stimulus and we try to interpret what this stimulus actually is and then brain uh, with the pre-existing knowledge that is provided into our brain will try to solve this stimulus and will try to find out the answer to those stimulus and in that way perception occurs so this is the whole meaning behind how perception occurs next is the definition of perception so there are different kind of definition provided by different authors so here we are going to uh, see the two definition first one is given by Edmund fentino he says that perception is the organizing process by which we interpret our sensory uh, input that means all the things that our sensory organs are going to collect we are going to organize uh, these things into some particular information and then we are going to act on to those information that is known as perception. Next definition is given by R.S. Woodworth and D.G. Marcus. He say, both of them says that process of getting to know object and objective facts by the use of the senses. Both of the definition are almost same that our sense organs are going to collect some information and then our brain is going to act on to that information and going to find out the solution for that information. So these were the definition of perception. Next is, are the principles of perception. So what is principles of perception? 
So into the principle of perception, Gestalt's law of organization, uh, we are going to study about them. So Gestalt believed that the brain creates a coherent perceptual experience by perceiving a stimulus as a whole, then perceiving discrete entities. That means we see things as a whole, not into the parts. This is more meaningfully stated in the Gestalt principle as the whole is better than some total of its part. This is explained under many sub principles of perception, which we are going to study into the further slides. So uh, what is the meaning of the whole is better than some total of its parts? Uh, let's take an example over here that uh, you see a pen lying on the floor. So you won't uh, say that a pen, uh, you will say just simply say that a pen is lying on the floor. You're not going to say uh, a, a body of a pen with the cap and with the refill is lying on the floor. You're going to perceive it as a whole. That means that is a pen. So we are going to perceive it as a whole that that is the particular meaning or that is the basic principle behind the Gestalt's law that we are going to perceive the thing as a whole, not into the parts. So let's move towards the sub principles of uh, Gestalt's law of organization, where first principle is figure ground relationship. So it states that according to this principle, any figure can be perceived more meaningfully in a background and that figure can't be separated from that background. For example, letters written with a white uh, chalk piece are perceived clearly in the background of a blackboard. So always there will be a, a relationship between the figure and ground. And, and if we take out any uh, um, means any of uh, this like figure or ground from a picture, obviously it won't be perceived as it is to be perceived. Uh, suppose uh, you take out the white, uh, this black, uh, black uh, background of a blackboard from the uh, background. So blackboard, if it would be removed from the background, those uh, things which be written with the white chalk piece over there won't be perceived as accurate as they were perceived when the background was there. So means there should be one background to perceive the things properly. Next principle is law of proximity. So law of proximity means, proximity means nearness. So the object which are nearer to each other can be perceived meaningfully by grouping them. For example, the word man here, though the letters are discrete, means the letters are individual letters are there. But when grouped together, give some meaning. If we see M-A-N, M is a different alphabet, A is a different alphabet, and N is a different alphabet. So if we see them as a part, so they won't be giving any particular meaning. But when we group them together, they are going to have some meaning behind them. So that is the law of proximity. Next is the law of similarity. So the stimulus needs not to be nearer to each other for perception. If there is a similarity in these objects, they are grouped together and perceived even if they are far away. Let us take an example from the first picture over here. You can say one uh, uh, row is con consisting of a particular star that is the light star and next is with the bright stars or some shaded stars. So when you perceive this picture, you are going to say there are uh, particular groups of stars. One consists of the light uh, color star and one consists of the darker shades of the star. So means they not need to be existing nearer to each other, but they are having some kind of a similarity. So in that kind of similarity, we are going to perceive them. Similarly, with the next picture, you can see there are some different shapes. So we are going to perceive the picture, although the shapes are not nearer to each other, means they are lying from far away from each other. But we are going to perceive them that some of these are rectangle and some of these are triangle. So this is the law of similarity. Next is the law of continuity. So what law of continuity state that any stimulus which extends in the same direction or shape will be perceived as a whole. For example, in the given figure, though the curved lines is broken, it is perceived as a continuous line. So also straight line is not seen, seen with semicircle, but as a continuous line. If we see this picture, but we are going to see that there are two lines. One is a straight line and one is a curvy line and both of them are moving towards in a particular direction. We are not going to observe them that this curve line is uh, bended over somewhere or this uh, curve line is broken, or we are not going to say that there are three semicircles. So we are perceiving them as a two distinct line which are moving into a particular direction. That is the law of continuity. Next is the law of closure. Law of closure states that when a stimulus is presented with gaps, the human tendency is to perceive that figure as a complete one by filling the gaps psychologically. That means we have already uh, having that kind of information into our brain. 
uh, like this is a circle or this is a star so when we are going to perceive this picture or when we are going to see this uh, picture so see our sensory organ that is our eyes are working on to it and they are sending this information to our brain so our brain will try to interpret what this particular shape is so brain would be having a pre existing idea that this is a circle so psychologically by uh, itself our brain is going to fill all those gaps that are presented with the first and the second picture and we are going to perceive this pictures as a whole not as a part so that is the law of closure next move towards the next law next law is the law of symmetry we say objects which are having a symmetrical shape are perceived as a group so uh, let us take an example over here so uh, different kind of a brackets are given into this uh, slide so we can see that when these particular shapes are drawn we are going to perceive them as a group that these are brackets but we are not taking them individually like the particular shape is there or particular bracket is there so we are going to perceive them as a bracket so that is the law of symmetry so this was all about the principles of perception i hope you have understood very well what are the laws of uh, this perception of principles of perception next move uh, now let's move towards our next topic that is the process of perception so process of perception how we perceive things so here we see that perception occurs by while we uh, provide some our focus or attention to particular stimuli so we are going to focus or predict the stimuli so by predicting or by uh, sensing that stimuli we are going to send that information to our brain where our brain is going to act on to that stimuli then by acting on to this stimuli our brain is going to find out the outcome for that stimuli and in that way perception occurs let's take a uh, look at it by with one more picture so uh, this is known as a perception action, action cycle so here you can say the perception process is divided into three part first is a sensation process then the attention and next is a perception process so into the sensation process our sensory organs are going to work on to the stimuli and they are going to collect or gather the data from the environment so that is the sensation process like something is cooking or something is baking into the oven so our sensory organs are going to focus on to this so uh, which all sense organs are going to work over here one is our visual sensation next is our auditory sensation and one is our olfactory so olfactory and our visual sensation are going to see that something is cooking whereas auditory sensation is going uh, to work on to the some beeping of the microwave or oven that is going on over here into the environment they are going to focus on to that so after collecting this stimulus many things many of the stimulus would be there into the kitchen at that particular time but you are focusing on to cooking now because maybe you are hungry or your all focus is on to the that particular thing that is being cooked so you are going to filter out this information or these stimuluses and only the relevant stimulus are going to be sent to the brain not all of the stimuli you are not going to focus on to the all of the stimuli so when you will pass this information that relevant information to the brain then the process of perception will start so here into the brain when all this information collected by the different sense organs when we send to the brain brain is going to act on to them and now we'll try to figure out what actually is going in the environment so by doing so when our uh, visual and our olfactory sensation which has collected the data that this particular smell is there or something like this uh, particular shape is of cooking so we will find out what actually is cooking if we have seen that something like we would be having an idea into already pre existing idea into a brain that a pie is cooking or something whichever whatever that is cooking into the kitchen so we are going to focus on to that and by our auditory sensation that the beeping sound from the oven that would be uh, oven would be giving we are going to collect that and we will uh, get to know that something is cooking into the oven so we'll perceive that a pie is cooking into a oven so this is the whole process how that perception action cycle works on by the sensory organ then by providing attention to particular stimuli and then perceiving the stimuli so this was about the process of perception next are the factor affecting perception so which all factor can affect the perception obviously uh, every time you are not going to perceive the things accurately as they should be perceived so there are some factors which affect our perception these can affect these uh, factors can affect in three ways one on the situation one on the target that is the stimulus only and next on the perceiver that is the we individual so how situation can be affected how the situation factor can be affected here if the time or the work setting or the social setting are not appropriate 
uh, let's say it's a night time so it's a dark over there you won't be uh, able to see all things properly so you won't be able to perceive the things properly so this is how the uh, factors uh, can affect the situation part next is the target or we say the stimulus itself so the size of stimulus or the intensity or the background of the stimulus novelty factor proximity and the motion all these factors are going to affect our stimulus uh, in suppose size if the stimulus if you are looking at a picture and picture is very small picture is there and you are not able to visualize the picture properly so that is also going to affect the perception part because we have not collected the data properly so how we are going to perceive this now if we say the intensity of the stimulus is not appropriate appropriate means someone is talking to you but they are whispering so you are not able to collect the data properly so you won't be able to perceive properly what they actually were saying same as the background if the background is not clear or the things are not visual uh, visually proper visual properly so you are not going to uh, act upon to those stimulus properly and not going to get the particular data same the novelty uh, we say the novelty that is something new if something is new and you are not paying attention to it or something is new and you are not able to collect the data about that particular new thing properly so you won't be able to perceive that that stimulus properly so this way the uh, our target or our stimulus can also affect our perception next is the perceiver perceiver means we individual or human being so if our attitude our motives interest and experience or expectations are not in a particular manner so we are not going to perceive the things properly let's take an example over here that i am not uh, motivated today i'm not feeling well today i'm ill and i'm just lying down in my bed so i'm not focusing on to the things properly as much as i have focused when i'm feeling but much energetic so i won't be able to perceive the things properly so in that way also my perception is going to affect means i'm not going to focus on to the things as much or i'm not going to pay the pay my attention on to the stimuluses so that is also going to affect my perception so this way our attitude our motives can also affect our perception so all these factors that we have studied into this slides can affect our perception and can mistake uh, can uh, cause a mistake in perceiving the things so uh, next we are going to see a, an activity over here so into this activity i have uh, added some pictures into the uh, slides so you can have a look over these pictures and tell me what or you just write down that what you actually see into these pictures so first picture is this over here here uh, some of you may observe that a old couple is sitting there or some of you may observe that two, two persons are sitting there one is a singing song and one is having some poetry over his head so this is how we perceive things these are optical illusion pictures so they are causing some illusions that means they are affecting our perception how actually we are seeing things so uh, you can see now on to which factors you are focusing and how your surrounding is there so that is going to affect our perception so these optical illusions also can affect our perception uh, we are having one more picture let's take a look over here so when you actually see this picture or have a look at picture you may uh, say that there are two birds immediately if you are not paying attention properly so you will say that there are two birds but in reality there is one bird and one uh, and there is some leaf structure which is giving an outline of a bird but actually there is only one bird so see how our uh, how our attention or how our own behavior can also affect our perception so i hope you have uh, actually learned about what actually perception is through to these pictures and you have, must have uh, enjoyed these activities let's move towards our next topic which is errors in perception now errors in perception all those factors that we have studied earlier that they can affect our perception can cause errors in perception so perception as we already studied the process of analyzing and understanding stimulus as it is but it may not always be possible to perceive the stimuli as they are knowingly or unknowingly we mistake the stimulus and perceive it wrongly it may be due to defect in our sense organs or defective functioning of the brain so many times the prejudices in the individual or the time of perception unfavorable background lack of clarity of stimulus or confusion or conflicts in mind and such factors can affect our perception and can cause the errors in perception so there are particular two errors in perception let's take a look over them the first error of perception is illusion and next is a hallucination so illusion is false perception in the presence of stimuli means stimulus would be there but you would be perceiving that stimulus wrongly 
so that means uh, like uh, you are sitting in uh, you are entering a dark room and suddenly a rope hangs from the rope you are going to perceive this uh, that rope as a stake so that means already the stimulus was there that rope was a stimulus but you are perceiving that rope as a snake so that is the false perception of the stimulus whereas into the hallucination false perception occurs in the absence of stimulus means no stimulus would be there but you would be perceiving a stimulus and you will be perceiving it in a false way so, uh, let's suppose i'm sitting in a room i'm alone and suddenly i say that someone tapped on my shoulder that means actually no one is there into the room but so, i felt that someone tapped on my shoulder that is the hallucination means without the any stimulus i'm perceiving some stimulus over there and i'm perceiving some things happening into the room so let's take a closer look uh, over illusion so illusion is a false perception here the person will mistake a stimulus and perceive it wrongly for example as i've already told you in a dark a rope uh, is mistaken as a snake or a vice versa sometime maybe a snake is there and you perceiving it as a rope so that means we can stimulus is there but we are uh, perceiving those stimulus wrongly or mistakenly we are uh, just perceiving those uh, stimulus not properly so this is all about the illusion as you can see that into this picture there is a rope lying uh, lying over the road but we may perceive it as a snake and sometime maybe snake would be there and we would be perceiving it as a rope now let uh, let's uh, move towards hallucination hallucination uh, is sometimes we come across instances where the individual perceives some stimulus even when it is not present that means stimulus is not there but we would be saying that stimulus is there this phenomenon is known as hallucination the person may see an object or a person etc or he may listen to some voices although there would be no object or sound in reality so that is the hallucination now hallucination can be divided into different type so it can be auditory hallucination it could be a visual hallucination it could be olfactory gustatory or tactile Uh, hallucination into the auditory hallucination you would say that you are listening to some whispers you are able to listen to some whispers but actually in reality no one is there into the room a visual hallucination like you would say a cat is running around the room but in reality nothing is there no cat nothing is there in the room so that is kind of a visual hallucination you uh, must have seen all these auditory or visual hallucination into the mentally ill patients so they sometimes act like someone is talking to them but actually in reality no one is there or they would say that uh, their friend is sitting along with them but in reality no one is sitting with them you and that person who is mentally ill is all, uh, only the person present in the room but they would be saying that no no my mother is sitting with me my brother is sitting with me or my friend is sitting with me but reality no one is there so that is kind of a visual hallucination sometime you all uh, also have a olfactory uh, hallucination means you would be saying that oh i can smell this nice fragrance over in this room but actually in reality nothing is there so that is kind of a olfactory in same way gustatory means you are having a some kind of a taste but actually in reality you didn't had anything or didn't ate anything a tactile stimulation as i already told you it would be like someone is touching my arm or someone is tapping on my shoulder but in reality no one is there or no other person is into that room so these are all kind of a hallucination now we have studied about illusion and hallucination now let uh, let's take a look over what is the particular difference into the illusion and hallucination so illusion and hallucination so hallucination is a false perception whereas illusion is merely misperception hallucination reacts on internal stimuli whereas illusion reacts to real or responds to real external stimuli hallucination experienced personally and uniquely but whereas illusion is often experienced universally like we have seen that picture that is a optical illusion where we act into the activity we have seen two pictures those are the optical illusion so universally every person can have that illusion but uh, the hallucination part occurs to individual level or at individual level means it occurs uniquely not every person is going to hallucinate hallucination generally abnormal whereas uh, illusion is generally normal and hallucination is difficult to be researched obviously when the things which are uh, experienced personally or uniquely are difficult to uh, research over whereas illusion can be measured observed and researched because it is experienced by everyone into the universe 
hallucination originates internally means some internal factors would be responsible for the hallucination whereas illusion originate externally means external stimuli i'm going to perceive them those stimuli improperly hallucination is associated with mental disorder whereas illusion is not associated with any of the mental disorder hallucination has more type whereas illusion has lesser types hallucination not that linked with art or entertainment whereas illusion is highly associated with art and entertainment as you sometimes see some uh, magic tricks uh, that magician uh, does those are also all are the part of illusion only and hallucination has a negative connotation due to its link with pathology which means some of the lackings into the brain or some pathological factor into the brain are going to cause the hallucination whereas illusion leans towards a positive connotation with its relevance to design magic trick and the likes so this was all about the hallucination and illusion i hope you must have got an idea what actually hallucination is and illusion and what is the basic difference between to the hallucination and illusion so this was all about the presentation now let's summarize the topic so today into this uh, pr uh, into this presentation we have studied about the introduction to perception along with that we studied about the meaning of perception that how our sense organs collect the data from the environment and then send that data to our brain and how our brain interpret that data and actually find out the particular uh, data uh, from our brain or actually uh, actually find out the uh, answer to our that particular stimuli that we have collected from the environment next we study about the definition of perception and then the principle of perception we study about the gestalt's law of organization where we study different uh, principles like law of sing, uh, similarity law of closer law of nearness all with that studied into the principles of perception next we studied about the process of perception where we studied how sense organs collect the data that is the sensory phase and then the attention phase how we collect only the relevant data and then pass it to the brain and how perception occurs so that we studied into the process of perception then we studied about the factor affecting perception that how uh, all different factors can uh, act on the different stimulus or on the individual level or onto the situation level and can cause the errors into the perception that we studied that uh, errors of perception that is the illusion and hallucination we we uh, studied about the illusion and hallucination and the difference between to the illusion and hallucination so this was all about my presentation i hope you have uh, got an idea what perception is and the basic meaning behind the perception so thank you and have a good day everyone